Just, oh, okay. um, so a very good evening to everyone. Thanks for having me here today. This is my first meetup talk, so a, a little bit nervous, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me today. So um, I'm Ben from Vietnam, uh, and I'm in Shopee as a front-end developer. Um, today, before I go into what I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to start with what I'm not going to talk about. So what I'm not going to give you is some kind of revelation. Okay? So there's no pieces of wisdom. I'm still a very newbie front-end developer, so just sit back and relax. Then, um, hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to give you a good time tonight. So then, why am I here for? What exactly am I here for? Um, you know, when you turn 25, and you realize that you turn 35, and then all sorts of realization kick in. So um, I'm turning 25 today. Uh, I mean, not today, this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm turning 25 this year, this year. Not yet, not yet. So um, I started to observe um, my uh, friends and my colleagues, GitHub and uh, all kinds of cool pet projects. And I realized that mine is just too boring. Um, so I wanted to find a way for me to be, you know, um, it sounds a bit like FOMO, um, fear of missing out, but actually for, I'm, I'm quite an introvert, so I don't fear missing out. But there's one thing that I, I, I have a fear of, that is um, fear of being boring, F-O-B-B. By the way, I just made up this acronym. Nowadays, everything can be an abbreviation. Um, so I don't know what you will find when you uh, Google F-O-B-B, but um, this is my talk, okay, so I decide what it means. So anyway, um, I wanted to find a way to be less boring. So I wanted to be there towards the less boring side. And um, throughout my um, education, there's one thing that I realized that whenever I have to do something, being projects or assignments, I tend to perform better if I combine what I do with what I like. So there are a few things that I like that haven't been changing over the years, no matter how old I get. Um, the, my first ever um, project, my first ever software is actually a um, music composer. So it's uh, built with CSS and Bootstrap because my partner and I at that time had no idea how to do backend. So it's pure JavaScript and CSS. Uh, I was quite proud of it um, for a few years. And cats, my first hackathon project is um, a drawing of a cat using OpenGL based in Java. Don't ask me why. Um, and all, all, the, all that the software does is that when you click on it, you say meow. It's actually a preloaded uh, WAV file inside the program because we couldn't do anything better. Yeah, it's our first hackathon in NES. So the third, um, the third item is, is what I'm going to talk to you about today, which is about anime. And um, so a long, long time ago, which is actually less than half a year ago, I came across this beautiful drawing. I, I think some of you might re recognize this. Uh, and it's drawn in pure CSS, just like Bart Lating just shown you. And of course, I don't think of suddenly jumping in and being able to draw this by myself. But this idea of drawing using just CSS just was so new to me and dropped on me like a bomb. So I wanted to give it a go. And by giving it a go, I don't mean um, trying from head to you know, torso like that, but um, something that looks like a human being. So I tried with my own portrait. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Yes, uh, it's, it's like from 100 drop to 1, but we all need to start somewhere, right? Um, so um, I knew that I had a long way to go, but you know, I was still being young and uh, ambitious. So I wanted to draw even a full humanoid shape. Um, and it just happened that there was a sharing that I could uh, use for my own company. So how did it look like? <sighs> Sorry. Moving on. Um, so it is obvious that I'm jumping too far. I need to take a step back and think about how I can construct proper shapes before going for a full human shape. And I started with um, natural objects because at least I have a reference point 
yeah, I'm generally better at copying stuff than inventing stuff. So uh, I chose objects in nature. Uh, so um, at least now there's a few curves, but I if you see closely, the curves are actually just small triangles or squares, rectangles. Yeah. Um, and gradually I learned how to draw proper curves. And the objects look, um, the shapes have more variety now instead of just repetitive like before. But as it goes with um, drawing objects in real life, sometimes it doesn't go as you hope. Uh, it can turn out to be something totally different if you take it out of context. Yeah. Um, actually, all of this right, is a practice for me to draw anime characters. Yeah, so my final goal is actually draw anime characters, but of course I will choose something easy first. And I chose this young man uh, whose nickname is Mob, M-O-B. His full name is Shigo, Shigeo Kageyama. So it's from an anime called Mob Psycho 100. Uh, this, uh, it has the same creator as One Punch Man. And I really enjoyed this show. And uh, it's not just because I enjoyed this show that, that I chose him as my first model, but it's also because he looks like he's easy to draw. And um, is he really easy to draw? I'm not very sure. But the result is, I mean, I kind of combined what I have uh, learned to draw before with his... Uh, uh, this character, so you have the snail there, you have the, the sunflower there. The sunflower is because um, the last ending of the season two, he was actually holding a sunflower and I really like that scene. The snail is because he's really slow and uh, that's somewhere that I really relate with him. That's why I write, like him so much, being a loser and all. So um, um, now that we are here, right, there's something that I need to face, you know, um, just, just why am I doing this? It's not even CSS job to draw anime characters. But that's exactly the point. Now, um, I don't know, you, you, you may not really um, see that coming, but um, what I mean is that if we do what we usually do in our job everyday life, like um, I will just use CSS to draw beautiful um, rectangles and borders, and that's fine. But we, I will only see new things for me to learn if I have a new task for me to do. For example, new animations, um, new shapes in the web, for example. But is there a faster way to learn new stuff? Yes, and that is we create our own problems and then we solve it, hopefully. So, um, um, I once uh, was a teaching assistant for a graphics module in uh, university and uh, Okay, uh, I, I kind of, okay, rewind for a while, rewind for a while. Yeah, I, I was talking about this, um, so creating new problems and then solve it. Hopefully it's because uh, there's no guarantee that we will find new solutions for new problems. But for me, this is a lifesaver. Um, hang on, eh? There is this, uh, pardon the intrusion. There is this article that I stumbled upon that talk about border radius in CSS. And um, before I knew about this, it, never mind. I had no idea that I could have more values for border radius than just four values. So this article has a very detailed explanation of how border radius are actually calculated uh, with the values that we provide. So if it's four values, actually what it means is that the, the border radius will be represented as ellipses and the parameters are, um, if, if we give them four values, then the x and the y of each ellipse will be the same, will be one value. So after reading the article, I learned that I can provide up to eight different values to create more 
varieties of shapes that I want. And for me, that is a really lifesaver because um, if you remember the sakura flower shapes before I had to use rectangles and triangles to, to form that shape, but now I actually can just use one leaf to create that shape. And I really like what I learned uh, with this article. The author also gives a tool. Um, it feels like a bit cheating, but, but, but what this tool does is that um, if you drag towards the shape that you want, then it will actually adapt. The values of the border radius actually adapt to what you, what to, what you adjust, and you can copy into the, your styling. Yeah, it feels like cheating, but yeah, this was a lifesaver for me where, while I was uh, drawing shapes in CSS. So, um, moving on from that, moving on from that, we still can't deny that um, drawing anime in CSS is, is not uh, inventing anything new because we have better people, better tools to do that. They have animators to draw anime characters. So, why, why do I want to draw anime with CSS? This brings me back to when uh, I was in school and one of my, uh, um, like, I think, I think in all of us, there's some part of us that really like something and we like it so much that we become masochists for it. So when I was in school and I was, um, when I was in, um, in my company now, I've seen people creating their own ukulele, their own guitar, their own rendering engines, and all of this have been created before. So does it mean that this, um, does it mean the act of creating those is just meaningless? I mean, maybe that's, that's for utility side, right? But I don't, I don't think just because the creation might not be meaningful, it's meaningless to just do it. So my personal belief is that even if you, you find that there's something better before, maybe we should just push for strengthening the fundamentals. So when I was in university, one regret that I had was that um, um, while what I was doing is supposed to be pro uh, computer programming, I feel like I was doing just the programming part and I was lacking of the computer part. So um, we were so much in the, in the chase for future readiness that we forget about all those um, fundamentals, for example, how a computer works, how a compiler works. So I felt like whenever I was told to be innovative, um, it was an opportunity lost to actually tell the student to create their own compiler, to create their own web framework or graphic rendering engine. And um, um, when I was kind of an assistant for a graphic module in NUS, my student one day came to tell me, this is such a hassle. Why do I have to do this when I can draw this by hand so much faster? And I think she's totally right. Because I know that if it's just about drawing mock, right? Um, if I draw by hand, I can do it in 15 minutes. So why do I spend hours just to fix his hair, uh, make his, his, his fringe like not so flat? Um, I think that um, it, it ties back to my previous point that we should sometimes just unlearn what we learned and pretend that we don't have uh, that knowledge already. Sometimes, sometimes I think we just need to forget what we have learned and just discard your common sense. Of course, temporarily, not, not forever. Um, but all those um, still um, haven't... I mean, I, I have been saying like uh, a lot to sound like justify myself, but in the end, we can't deny that um, this will not create a very shimmering resume. Right. Nobody's going to hire someone to draw a picture of Doraemon in CSS in their educational website. They'll just hire someone to draw some, uh, um, maybe not even in SVG, maybe it's like a PNG. And, and unless there's a job called CSS artist, I don't think that anyone will, will, will think of this as um, an edge for a job for a developer. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's... Uh, Romantic for us to draw something like heart shape for your loved ones, uh, but it's not going to get attention of someone famous. I, I don't know, uh, not Dan Abramov, not Mark Zuckerberg. So, so 
it doesn't mean that um, this has no point. What's the purpose of doing this? Absolutely nothing. But that's fine because um, for me, when I can do something that I don't need a justification for, or maybe I can't even justify for, it's usually liberating. And I think um, it's, um, it's just like you do something for a stranger without asking for anything in return. It's just like when you go to, when you go somewhere and you just take a bus without knowing exactly whether you will go to your place or not and, and see whether it drops you and then take a right bus later on. So I feel like um, we have been trained to be rational. We have been trained to um, do something with purpose. But I think once in a while, maybe, maybe it's uh, a good thing to just sit back and do something just for the sake of doing it, maybe like for five minutes. So that's why I also draw anime characters in CSS in the first place because it's both uh, something that I like at work CSS and something that I also like as a child and maybe even as an adult that is anime. And I feel like it's as if I'm going back in time and that ties me back to the topic of this talk in the first place that is what, does, what do CSS and Neverland have in common because they give us the idea of being young forever. So. I think um, um, I'm not sure about you. Maybe you have a different way to escape reality, but to me, um, it's just it's just like uh, walking to a homeless person and talk to him. Oh, by the way, if you don't know where to find homeless people, you can go to homeless hut in Singapore. They will tell you where to find. Just like talking to a prostitute on the street. Just like um, befriending a same-sex couple, going to a gay bar. I, I mean, it's all new experience that will open my uh, my vision yeah so now now that I have come to this stage uh, before I close my talk yeah, let me just uh, bring you back to this story of a self-portrait um, I was preparing for this talk over the weekend and I feel like uh, in order to show you you know how much I grew then I should maybe maybe improve this self-portrait and add an animerish uh, Mangaish feel to it. So, uh, <laughs> this is what I'm most excited and most nervous about. Uh, so, uh, after f like four hours, it became like this. Um, even though now, now it probably becomes like you know, someone else already, but uh, you know, that, that's what life is, right? Sometimes it doesn't turn out to be what you think it will be, especially if you are drawing something that is real. Sometimes even better than the real thing itself. So, yeah, that's all part of life. Um, so, I um, have um, been trying to smoothen my drawing and then sorry, um, add on to the variety of shades and even add the different shades together to, find, um, to draw uh, an artwork. Now I feel like I'm talking about DNA structures. So I know that I, know that I have a long way to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to try and get there yet. Um, maybe not the, a copy of it, but um, the next stage I... I would think that I need to add at least some kind of lighting, some kind of shading to it. So talking about shading and uh, at least now my character has expression again. He has, he has two eyes, he has one mouth. Yeah. So talking about expression and talking about lighting, um, there's actually one more shape that was drawn in CSS throughout the slides. And can you guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. This is slides. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the emoji was done in CSS. So, so the emoji was my attempt to, to add at least some shading in it. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm like 1% towards my goal now. So, um, yeah, um, to close off this talk, I'll just give credit to, you know, the, the idea for the topic of this talk is actually not by myself. I'm a boring person, remember? So it's actually uh, taken from the, the author of this, these two books, Freakonomics and Super Freakonomics. I love these books. I read them each twice now. So, and I, I think I'm still going to read them again. So um, thank you for being in my journey to become less boring. Uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.